Due Diligence in Business Restructuring by CA Disha Gada. Bijus acquires Akash Educational Services in nearly $1 billion deal. Grow acquires India Bulls Housing Fiends MF. Joint partnership between Bharat Pay and Centrum Finance to infuse funds in PMC Bank. Farmizi bought controlling stake in Thairoke. In an ever-growing deal-making landscape, smaller and mid-sized companies are now seeking the smartest route forward in their growth strategies. The big highlight for this year has been the rally in ambitions of Indian startups who are taking bold bets by acquiring established businesses that could be arguably described as old economy. Majority of the companies have resorted to route through private equity venture capitalists, funding or inorganic growth for improved business synergies and access to greater customer base. Mergers and acquisitions are at the core of business growth and restructuring life cycle. However, there also exist other restructuring options like i. Joint Ventures 2. Strategic Alliance 3. Reverse Merger 4. Divestiture v. IPOs 6. Buybacks and so on. It is of prime importance that the buyers in any transaction should carefully examine their business strategy and then align themselves with any of the above-mentioned restructuring options for successful acquisition or partnerships. Background In this article we will learn that to thrive amidst competitive conditions, timely and accurate intelligence isn't just an option, it's a necessity, and that means a professionally executed due diligence process. Due diligence process equips buyers as well as investment partners and lenders with a clear understanding of the story behind the numbers, different than conventional reporting or audits can reveal. Due diligence ordinarily incorporates investigative measures directed against all relevant matters pertaining to restructuring, a series of operations including data analysis and field surveys amongst others. There are different due diligence processes such as financial due diligence, legal due diligence, human resources due diligence, operational due diligence, and the list goes on. Today, we will focus on financial due diligence. Let's understand why financial due diligence is to be performed. Prime reason for conducting diligence is to showcase the corrective purchase price also highlight any red flags in terms of go or no-go situation for buyer, considering it is a buy-side diligence. Below is a pictorial presentation of impact on purchase price of key due diligence processes collectively known as statement of adjustments. Enterprise value, multiple of EBITDA or DCF. Due diligence coverage, quality of earnings adjustments on EBITDA of business. Less. Net debt. Identify liabilities that could be considered as debt and reduced from purchase price. Due diligence coverage, debt and debt-like analysis. Add less. Change in working capital, level of working capital to be delivered at closing, target working capital. Due diligence coverage, working capital analysis. Equals to. Total Purchase Price Subject to Other Share Purchase Agreement Considerations Quality of Earnings QFE Analysis The goal of a QFE is to adjust the reported EBITDA to calculate a pro forma restated EBITDA that best reflects the current state of the company on an ongoing basis. The analysis also presents a historical adjusted EBITDA that is comparable throughout the last to all three years, thus reflecting the normalized EBITDA over the period of analysis. The purpose of normalizing EBITDA is to assist clients with valuation, also safeguarding value erosion and leakage up to the date of closing. QFE adjustments are differences between the value of the business as stated at the reporting date and value arrived at the closing date. These adjustments are subjective as there are no strict rules for the same. Following are few illustrative adjustments that are provided to restate the EBITDA. 
accounting gap adjustments times inappropriate igap policies revenue recognition lease accounting etc times cut off adjustments period adjustments times recognition adjustments times non provision of doubtful debts warranty guarantee employee benefits non recurring transactions times one time transactions such as legal settlements unusual transactions etc times restructuring initiatives times sundry balances written off written back times facility closures moving costs pro forma adjustments times run rate or ramp up margin adjustments times increase in salary going forward times bonus incentives held back for previous years times hiring for vacant positions times impact of foreign exchange fluctuations management adjustments times out of deal perimeter margins times personal expenditure if any times non core activity margins times of book sales cash sales adjustments above mentioned ebitda adjustments are to arrive at the pro forma adjusted ebitda from the reported ebitda likewise the reported revenue of the seller can be adjusted to arrive at pro forma adjusted revenue in a similar fashion by giving adjustments like one off revenue discontinued sales revenue recognition changes cut off adjustments etc debt and debt like analysis most mergers and acquisition deals are negotiated on a cash free and debt free basis cfdf in simple terms this means that the seller keeps all the cash and pays of the debt at the time of the sale of business the idea seems straightforward however to arrive at the actual cfdf terms can be contentious point of the negotiation and thus affect the pricing of the deal the term cash free means that the cash and cash equivalents like cash on hand balance with banks term deposits with banks petty cash etc will be subtracted from the reported debt however restricted cash restricted fixed deposits are not subtracted as they might be placed as security lien for a wailing letter of credits term loans forward contracts and cash credit facilities it becomes paramount to understand another term cash like items these are non operational surplus assets which are reduced from the reported net debt amount few examples of such assets are non operating investments government and marketable securities obsolete assets capex advances given loans to directors loans to related parties etc the term net debt includes term loans working capital loans unsecured borrowings vehicle loans loans from related parties etc following are few illustrative adjustments that are provided to restate the net debt financial items within net working capital nwc reclassified to debt times current maturities of long term debts times overdue trade payables times capex creditors net of advances given times accrued financial liabilities such as interest payable obligations to pay cash with no additional benefit to the company times proposed dividend and tax thereon times advance tax net of provision for tax obligations that may may not result in cash outflows during the buyer's investment horizon times unfunded pensions gratuity leave encashments times deferred tax liabilities times exposure to direct indirect tax liabilities times contingent liabilities commitments and contingencies times minimum purchase agreements times letter of credit times outstanding bank guarantees times capital commitments other matters for consideration times upgrades required for accounting hr or it systems times capex and pipeline working capital analysis in a transaction working capital is calculated as current assets minus current liabilities 
subject to all cash or debt balances which are excluded, including any cash-like or debt-like items. Furthermore, working capital is broken down in trade working capital and other working capital. Trade working capital includes accounts for the business operations, mostly being inventories, trade receivables and trade payables. Other working capital includes the remainder of the working capital accounts, such as personal liabilities, taxes payables and other current payables and receivables. As the working capital is used to finance the day-to-day -day operations of the business, for a buyer it is important they receive a business after acquisition with sufficient working capital. The level of sufficient working capital is defined as the normal level of net working capital, also known as normalized working capital. The normalized working capital is to be then compared with the benchmark working capital levels also known as target working capital. Any excess shortfall between normalized and target working capital should be adjusted to the enterprise value. Another way to understand the net debt and working capital would be to bifurcate tag each of the balance sheet items into either a debt-like item or working capital item, excluding the shareholders' funds and fixed assets, which are neither of both. This exercise will make sure that none of the balance sheet items are inadvertently overlooked in the calculations. In net working capital, seasonality is important to understand because that indicates the maximum and minimum financing requirements in a yearly pattern. Buyer would then understand the peak seasons requiring greater funding as well as the slack seasons. The required level of working capital is generally calculated as the average of the last 12 months, LTM. By taking 12 months, any seasonality impact is included. For a transaction, it does not matter if the working capital is positive or negative. As long as it reflects the normal level needed to operate the business and there is no need for an additional capital contribution. For example, a normal negative level of working capital could be applicable in case of direct cash sales, i.e. shops or supermarkets, or business with a high level of prepayments. Few general pointers for other key areas in due diligence processes. Times before analyzing any area in financial due diligence, any consultant should answer three questions, basis which they would have a perspective of key figures in analysis carried out. Oh, what are the key performance indicators as per the seller company's management? Oh, what are the key performance indicators as per the buyer company's management? Oh, how are the industry dynamics currently viewed in this business? Times analyzing the year on year growth or fall will help in better understanding of the delta in the business and eventually understand whether the same forms part of one-off expense income or any other QFE adjustment. Times customer concentration or even excessive dependence on location, product service stream could be a possible red flag. Times transactions or contracts entered with related parties should be scrutinized for any possible abnormalities. Time-specific clauses in contracts or agreements entered with the customers or suppliers should be checked such as minimum commitment of revenue purchase, penalty clauses, guarantees, etc. Time's general understanding of the industry with regards to market demand, supply chain, competitors, benefits offered or curtailed by the government, etc. Due diligence processes in pandemic era while conducting due diligence under pandemic period with imposed travel restrictions, face-to-face -face meetings, on-site visits, physical verifications are no longer an option. Consulting firms are doing away with the traditional means of due diligences and now resorting to digital technology, thus using virtual data rooms with data protection and control access facilities. With due diligence under pandemic era, the buyer's investors are trying to understand the short-term direct impact as well as seller management's long-term planning and operations. 
Below are few areas of financial due diligence that should be considered. Times Revenue analyze the top line impact with the sales trend before and after pandemic. Consider the supply chain and value chain to find potential laggard pandemic impacts. Consultants should also focus on demand for the products services in the post pandemic era. Also, the forecasts laid down by the management should be given due importance while analyzing revenue. Times EBITDA margins, months directly affected by COVID cannot be indicative of the historical performance known of the future outlook. Therefore, consultants should try to normalize the EBITDA and compare EBITDA with trends for the period before COVID-19 on a seasonally adjusted basis to impacted months. Comparison with peers in the industry and management's near-term forecasts could also be resorted. Times employee cost Understanding whether the company has resorted to employee layoffs, suspension of pay, salary packets, deferred bonuses increments. In such cases, a run rate and pro forma adjustment wherein salaries bonuses have not been paid will need to be considered. Also, it becomes salient to analyze whether the current employee workforce is normative and there are no vacancies or shortages to sustain the revenue or EBITDA levels. Times other sadandha costs, adjustments for one-time expenses due to COVID-19 must be factored. Force major clause in rental agreements must be referred in case of shutting down of premises, other expenses such as transportation costs electricity, advertisement, and other sadandha costs will be analyzed considering past year expenses and current absorption rates. Times working capital, due to pandemic, assessing the payment cycle of trade receivables and payables for bad debts and overdue payables became crucial. Monthly quarterly working capital and cash requirements analysis could be performed and then marry it with the financial position of the company. Times debt-like items, assessing whether the target has acquired additional loans to resolve the financial crisis. Comprehending whether financial covenants and onerous clauses are met. Ability to repay debt post-moratorium period will need to closely be looked upon along with the tag of going concern. Conclusion To conclude, while it is impossible to forecast the long-term effects of the outbreak, there is still a way out for well-informed parties to continue with their deals by altering due diligence to serve as means of accelerating the transaction rather than treating it as an obstacle on account of the inability to conduct it in the traditional way. Undoubtedly, in times to come cash is the king, buyers with funding would be able to dominate and leverage their position to obtain favorable deals. Seller, on the other hand, would want to adopt weight and watch approach rather than diluting their stake at lower side of the valuations. However, all said and done, buyers and sellers, both are flexing their muscles and there are no holdbacks from their sides with Manda activities in India being on rise and continuing higher. Note, Views expressed in this article can be subjective, and that of the readers on the same topic may differ. Disclaimer, the views opinions expressed in the article are purely of the contributor. The readers are requested to take proper professional guidance before abiding the views expressed in the update. Association disclaims any liability in connection with the use of the information mentioned.